A beloved, mentally unstable masked vigilante once said, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. And this exact sentiment was shared by SCP-682, the hard-to-destroy reptile, as it traversed the almost limitless liminal hell known as the Backrooms. It'd been little more than a standard chase and secure mission for the mobile task forces pursuing SCP-682 after its latest deadly containment breach, until the vicious lizard made its way into an abandoned warehouse and no clipped its way into a new reality. As the SCP Foundation are still desperately searching for the missing beast back in our native reality, 682 has been discovering whole new vistas of violence. First, it found itself in the endless yellow halls of Level Zero, where if the madness doesn't get you, the starvation and thirst will. Well, unless you're an anomalous reptilian abomination that can seemingly adapt to any situation. Once 682 escaped this gaudy purgatory, it found its way into Level 1, an endless warehouse full of equal parts monsters and hapless human settlers, all of whom it decimated in a single bloody afternoon. Then on to level 2, the Pipe Rooms, where it faced a bevy of beasts that it eagerly put into the ground. And that brings us up to now, and by extension, on to level 3. SCP-682 spilled out into another section of long, industrial hallways. It didn't know how it had gotten in, and honestly, it didn't really care at this point. All it needed to do was keep moving forward and killing as it pleased, and it seemed there were plenty of creatures down here to kill. That being said, this level had a certain energy to it, and we mean that literally. 682's incredibly sensitive, well, senses, allowed it to detect an incredibly powerful electrical field emanating from this level, and from the sounds of machines humming all around it, traveling down great bundles of wires and pipes bound to the walls. It knew that this level must have been attached to a generator of truly incredible size. It charged forward, weaving around the different hallways at freakish speeds, searching for the next thing it could blast into oblivion. And thankfully, it was able to find its first target soon enough, a nest of creatures known as Death Moths. These were huge, fluttering moths of freakish size congregating around a glowing electrical outlet. Intriguing. SCP-682 decided to approach and introduce itself. After all, they looked like pretty easy prey. 682 would regret this oversight. While the male death moths are pretty much harmless, the female death moths have an extremely potent defense mechanism. As SCP-682 approached, the creatures began swarming and spraying acid onto its reptilian flesh. This was painful and irritating for 682, of course. But if any entity on Earth is pretty accustomed to dealing with large quantities of powerful acid by now, it's SCP-682. Its skin quickly healed from the acidic onslaught, and it developed a powerful counter-adaption. A long, sticky, frog-like tongue, which it used to devour the nest full of death moths and move along to its next target. It continued exploring Level 3. A number of hallways were marked off with metal bars, another very familiar sight for SCP-682, so for simplicity's sake, it just kept itself to the unobstructed paths. That's where it soon ran into another life form, standing around like a sitting duck in one of the level's many anomalous hallways. It was just another human, in a similar outfit to all those major explorer group weaklings it had destroyed earlier. Strangely, even when SCP-682 entered the hallway with it, it didn't seem to react properly. It just vacantly stared off into space, stumbling around awkwardly. 682, bemused, whipped this random, disoriented stranger in the chest with its tail, sending him sailing into the nearby wall. It was at this point that something strange happened. The force of the strike caused the man's clothes and also skin to disintegrate, leaving something entirely different underneath. SCP-682 had no idea what was going on, but it knew that it hated it. This was its first encounter with a creature known as a Skin Stealer. It would be natural for a human being to be terrified of an abomination like this. An apex predator like 682, on the other hand, it barely even found the Skin Stealer interesting. With a single stomp from its clawed reptilian foot, the creature was very, very dead and SCP-682 continued its journey through the bowels of Level 3. It found itself drawn to whatever the source of all the energy was, 
if it even had one single source. It was almost as though the entire level was one gigantic predator, powering the rest of the back rooms. And if there was electricity, perhaps there were other humans in here to kill. SCP-682 liked that idea very much indeed. However, while making its way down a slightly wider hallway, one that it had previously believed was completely uninhabited, it was suddenly ambushed by a group of mysterious attackers, a number of tall gray creatures with long, clawing arms and unclear facial features stepped away from the wall. These entities are known as the Dullers, ambush predators native to the back rooms. They normally run away from threats, but considering the number of them congregated in the hall around SCP-682, perhaps they felt a little more confident about taking down their prey in a group. But they'd made a grave miscalculation. It would not matter whether there was one dollar or a thousand dollars. In the battle between them and SCP-682, they would always, always, always be the prey. But lucky for them, while they weren't aware of this immutable fact yet, SCP-682 was more than happy to give them a first-hand education. While the Dullers tried their best to claw into SCP-682's thick, leathery hide, the creature decided to employ a new ability it had stolen from the female death moths. Several new glands developed all over 682's body, each of which produced a fine mist of highly concentrated acid. Soon enough, the Dullers were howling in pain and melting away into dull gray puddles on the ground, never to reconstitute again. That's what you get for trying to climb up the food chain, folks. It never ends well. Unless you're 682, that is. After disposing of the Dullers, which in 682's own humble opinion had more than earned that title by indeed being extremely dull, it decided to continue its search for some of the power sources on this level. Perhaps it could harness this ability for its own benefit, but it was interrupted by what is, frankly, one of the grossest enemies in all of the back rooms, the Bursters. And if even hearing the name makes you feel a little sick, then you're correctly primed for what you're about to encounter. They're humanoid creatures that walk around on all fours, with its back legs grotesquely stretched out into the shape of a dog's hind legs. But that's nothing compared to the Burster's truly diabolical back knee. All over the creature's back, you can see huge, calloused cysts that contain a potent and noxious acid. Sure, the acid is only about as dangerous as the stuff produced by female death moths, but in our humble opinion, the method of acid delivery is far more repulsive and that makes Bursters less desirable to encounter. A small group of them skittered out of the darkness towards SCP-682. The hard-to-destroy reptile also found them disgusting. Though, now that we think about it, SCP-682 thinks all forms of life are disgusting, so we suppose that it's all relative. However, when they began to burst their backs and coat 682 in their horrible pus, they perhaps earned the rarely given label of extra disgusting from this living embodiment of reptilian hate. 682 quickly retaliated by clawing the horrid creatures to death, which I think we can all agree is a good and well-deserving ending for the vile little beasts. We would have done the same thing. The next enemies that 682 encountered weren't nightmarish creatures, but in fact were human beings stationed in the Major Explorer Group's Base Gamma, the third most important base in all of the back rooms. They were on high alert after losing contact with Base Alpha several days before. Having no idea that everyone at that base had been slaughtered by SCP-682, a fate that, if they weren't tremendously lucky, they would soon share. But they had little more than luck on their side this time. SCP-682 sighted the base on the end of a long hallway. There was even a person standing at the other end of the hall, seemingly blissfully aware of the encroaching presence of one of the SCP Foundation's most dangerous and formidable captives. 682 loved killing humans most of all. They weren't just dumb animals. They had the intellectual capacity to actually appreciate the life that was being ripped away from them, and it made the whole act even more pleasurable for SCP-682. It set its sights on the ignorant Major Explorer group member leaning against the distant wall and decided to charge for him. Claws extended and fangs bared, this would be such easy prey. Until the moment when someone in the distance yelled, NOW! and the seemingly defenseless human turned around and pulled a lever on the wall. Suddenly, the whole hallway was electrified, sending millions of volts coursing through SCP-682's writhing body. 
This whole thing had been an elaborate trap. The humans at Base Gamma hadn't survived this long in the back rooms by being stupid. The more technically savvy members had rewired some of the hallways to channel the immense energy of the generators and fry any unfortunate entities that tried to use these hallways to break into Base Gamma. There was one big problem, though. SCP-682 wasn't just any unfortunate entity. While it did initially look like electricity might fry the beast, it gradually began channeling the electricity into its own body and developing the capacity to re-gift this electricity to the people who so kindly provided it. SCP-682, now a crackling conduit of electricity, leaped from the shocking hallway and into Base Gamma. Soon enough, it had fatally electrocuted all 300 members of the major explorer group posted in Base Gamma and returned to its baseline state. Level 3 had grown tiresome now. It seemed that there were no more exciting new creatures to massacre. As a result, 682 slid into a nearby elevator and went down, where a new level awaited. This was how SCP-682 got to level 4. And level 4 was not what the Hard to Destroy Reptile expected. In contrast to the industrial nightmare of the previous few levels, level 4 was like a limitless office block, with all the furniture ripped out. While for some this might represent the crushing existential banality of office life, and how the wheels of capitalism inevitably work us all to death, SCP-682 had never worked in an office before, so it didn't really have the proper cultural reference points to appreciate this more abstract kind of fear. It wanted monsters to kill. 682 spent approximately six days searching around the hellscape that is level 4, not discovering a single person or entity while it was there. It was honestly the most stressed that SCP-682 had felt since coming here. The beast was almost tempted to unscrew a light bulb from above, draw a little face on it, begin referring to it as Wilson, and then kill it. 682 felt the closest emotion it could manage to immense gratitude when it sighted the glowing green of a distant exit sign at the end of a long hallway, finally a way out onto another level. Hopefully this one would have more creatures to slaughter. Welcome. SCP-682 to level 5. SCP-682 didn't really know what to expect from the next level of the back rooms. After all, it all seemed pretty random so far, but it definitely didn't expect to see a classy, well-appointed hotel on the other end of the hallway. SCP-682 had never seen the Stanley Kubrick masterpiece The Shining, nor read the book it was based on by Master of Horror Stephen King, but if it had, it would probably have drawn the comparison. Instead, it was already busy tearing through the ornate halls, looking for new prey to slaughter. The first unexpected encounter was with a small cat that casually wandered out into the hallway right in front of it. The cat, who didn't seem threatened by SCP-682, said, Hi, I'm Samantha. You got any meat you can lend me? I'll tell you your fortune if you do. SCP-682 was, frankly, baffled. It took a moment to formulate a reply. You worthless creature. You have no idea what you're dealing with, do you? I'm going to bring this place to ruin and destroy all who reside within. 682 said, So, ah, uh, no meat then? 682 growled and swiped at the cat with its claws. Luckily, she was able to dodge. The cat tutted and padded away into the darkness, muttering, Go bother the beast instead, jerk. This piqued SCP-682's interest. A beast, you say? Sounds important. Sounds powerful. Finally, a worthy opponent. Our battle shall be legendary. And with renewed vigor, SCP-682 began prowling the halls of the back rooms, searching for this beast to defeat and destroy. But to begin with, things were grievously disappointing. One of the first monsters on this opulent hotel level that the Hard to Destroy Reptile faced were diminutive little rodents known as Death Rats, which were effectively slightly larger than normal rats with little horns. SCP-682 stomped them all with ease, its thoughts dripping with disdain for their truly pathetic weakness. What kind of hotel allows itself to be filled with rats? Even by human standards, this would be disgraceful. Soon after, SCP-682 encountered a few familiar foes, female death moths and hounds, all as easy to kill as they were before. SCP-682 didn't understand. The feline promised that there was a beast down here. Was it hiding from the mighty reptile like a filthy coward? <laughs> Worthless. 
but it was in the depths of this cynicism that SCP-682 encountered a growler. First it heard the sound of animalistic growling projected directly into its mind, getting louder and louder by the moment. Then as the growling grew in volume, 682 heard the thunderous footsteps of a huge quadruped getting closer. 682 wondered, as the roaring became almost deafening, whether this sounded heralded the approach of the beast. However, the second the monster actually turned the corner and came into view, 682 had to suppress the urge to laugh. It was one of the most absurd things it had ever seen. It looked like a giant pile of pipe cleaners, in every color imaginable, arranged into a vaguely four-legged structure. This was the monster producing all that psychic racket? <laughs> Pathetic. SCP-682 resolved in that moment to show the monster how it was done. SCP-682 immediately evolved its own psychic emission capacitors within its brain and projected the message, You are a worthless little creature, directly into the simple mind of the growler. It began to quake in horror at the booming of 682's voice in its brain. What was this terrifying new creature? It didn't understand. And just like that, 682, who had grown bored of this one-sided psychic battle, turned up the strength of the psychic beam by a factor of 50. The sudden psychic blast was so powerful that the Growler collapsed to the ground and burst into flames, burning itself away into nothingness in a matter of moments just as weak as 682 had expected. Hopefully the beast would provide a greater challenge, because this was just getting sad. SCP-682 shook off the disappointment and continued running through the halls of the hotel. Eventually, after passing through some dull dance hall called the Beverly Room, 682 found itself running through a hallway full of long portraits. Every person in the portraits had a strange, twisted grin on their face. Not that this even registered to SCP-682. What did occur to 682, though, was the figure that suddenly materialized in the hallway in front of it. It was a strange figure, to be sure, an entity in a suit with a large blue cuttlefish for a head. The creature cleared its throat and began to speak. Well, hello there. You're new here, aren't you? Mm, such an interesting creature. You've been making some trouble on the other levels, haven't you? <laughs> Not that it's any of my business. On the contrary, dear sir, I like the cut of your jib. How would you feel about joining me in the hotel business? It isn't easy to manage this dimension by myself, after all. How about you and I come into my office? We can work out the terms of our... 682 lunged forward and unceremoniously devoured the creature's head, allowing its dapperly dressed body to fall limply to the ground, dead. SCP-682 grunted, annoyed by the distraction the creature had provided. It had better things to do. This beast has got to be around here somewhere. Want to learn more about The Backrooms? Check out our new sister channel, The Backrooms Explained, where we're exploring The Backrooms level by level and uncovering all of its secrets. Now go check out SCP-682 Ways SCP Foundation Try to Kill Hard to Destroy Reptile, and SCP-682 vs. SCP Foundation Hard to Destroy Reptile Termination Attempts for more of everyone's favorite ornery reptile.